so Kanzuk is an issue that I was asked to comment on, so here goes. As the UK gets closer and closer to the end of the Brexit transition period, things in Britain are going to change dramatically over the next number of months and years. The relationship with the EU has officially ended on paper, but after the transition period, Britain will be carving out a new future for itself. Now, some Conservatives and Brexiteers have been pushing the concept of Kansuk, and while it appears quite simple on the surface, it isn't as well thought out or clear cut as it seems. So, Kansuk is a concept that is backed principally by three organisations and think tanks. The Henry Jackson Society is generally referred to as a liberal conservative think tank, which has hosted speakers from current Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in the US, to Prime Minister Boris Johnson, to former Labour MP, then vote Leave campaigner and now House of Lords peer, Baroness Stewart. It's also backed by the Adam Smith Society, a UK-based think tank that is conservative libertarian and whose policies the current Tory government has adopted, such as forcing those on welfare to work for their benefits. The last is Kanzuk International, which is a non-profit organisation started by the university professor James Skinner. Kanzuk refers to Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the UK. Officially, their main goals are unlimited immigration between those states via freedom of movement and free trade along closer economic, social and diplomatic ties. So a bunch of libertarians and conservatives who want to emulate the EU but without the Europeans. What could go wrong with that? So one of their core beliefs is trade. Well, let's have a look at that. New Zealand and Australia already trade with each other, but they don't do a great deal of trade with the other two, the UK or Canada. The reason they don't do a lot of trade is due to their geographical location on the globe, almost at the extremes from each other. Most trade between nations is driven by how close those nations are. For example, the UK trade mainly with Ireland and other neighbouring countries in the EU. But we already knew that. Canada does most of its trade with the USA, while the other two, New Zealand and Australia, trade mostly with their neighbouring countries in Asia, in particular China. To reinforce this point, Canada trades more with the USA than the other Kanzuk countries combined. Australia trades more with Japan, for example, than with the other combined Kanzuk countries. And if we took all the current trade that takes place between the UK and the other possible members of Kanzuk, Canada, New Zealand and Australia, it wouldn't be able to compare with the current trade the UK has with the country of Belgium. Some critiques of this idea is that it makes no sense for the UK, for example, to leave a customs union which is on its doorstep to join another which it trades less with. Another criticism of Kanzuk is the freedom of movement aspect, which is another core belief. The UK, who have trumpeted the idea of ending freedom of movement with the EU, would want to resurrect the practice under Kanzuk. Can anyone tell me why Brexiteers who have embraced Kanzuk would be open to freedom of movement with a country like Canada or New Zealand, but not with freedom of movement from a country like Spain, for example? I can't put my finger on the reason why. While Canada, New Zealand and Australia may be happy to develop better relations with the UK on a political and diplomatic footing, they are not too keen on perhaps what Brexiteers want. A resurrection of the British Empire. Oh yes, some of them want to go back to the good old days where they told these countries what to do. The people of Australia, Canada and New Zealand no longer see themselves as subjects to the Queen, but as independent citizens developing their nations and building ties with their neighbours, the ones that they mainly trade with. Their relationship with the UK is important, but not that important. While these countries all speak English, it is important to remember that Canadians are more influenced by the likes of the USA. New Zealand and Australia are more culturally influenced by their neighbours in Asia. And finally, even if Brexiteers don't like it, the UK is influenced culturally by its European neighbours. We're not living in the late 19th and early 20th century anymore. Kanzuk is more about looking back fondly on bygone days of the British Empire. In the world of today, most nations want to agree trade deals and greater ties with the big three, the US, 
the EU and China. Kanzuk will still be pushed by its supporters, but it doesn't really stand up to scrutiny. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider becoming a subscriber and liking the video. And of course, let me know in the comments section what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.